Many might recognize Shakespeare's famous play, Midsummer Night's Dream, and here is Moth, Shakespeare's most mysterious fairy, whom seldom speaks or is addressed. This is a namesake of Muncie's very own Moth Danner, a constant presence with a hand in nearly every aspect of Muncie's art community. From A Midsummer Night's Dream, which is Shakespeare. Uh, Shakespeare was the first uh, book, other than children's book, I ever read. Um, I lived with my mother and grandparents who had a very classical library, and I would sneak whatever was on the bottom shelf that I could reach into my bedroom and crawl under my desk and read by the nightlight at night. But um, when I was in college, I did performance art with my roommate, and we did things that were, we'll just go with risque and not totally legal. And so I came home from one show that we did at an art gallery and the gallery owner called me and he said, so hey, you guys left just in time. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the place came right after, but I didn't know your last name or, your, or really anything about you other than your phone number. So I just told him I didn't know what's up. And I was like, oh, we should use pseudonyms. <laughs> so my roommate and I sat down. She was a, um, she owned a Shakespearean troupe as a teenager in New York, she and her family. And she was a dramatic literature major. So we both like Shakespeare. And um, there are four fairies who are in Queen Titania's court. There's Moth, Cobweb, Peas Blossom, and Mustard Seed. Cobweb seemed a bit much with the way I looked, a little overly goth. So I got Moth. My roommate was Cobweb. She does not still go by it. And it just stuck. Moth is a seventh generation Muncie resident. She has a close relationship with her mother, Susan Danner, and was greatly inspired by her late grandmother. Moth studied psychotherapy and religion at Indiana University in Bloomington and later attended George Washington University in Washington, D.C. So yeah, so I moved out then when I was about 17 and um, was very involved in the punk scene. Muncie had a huge punk scene in the 80s. There was an all-ages club called the No Bar and Grill that is underneath what is now the Village Promenade on Martin. And I did not go immediately to IU. There was about a year in there after high school before that uh, where I um, owned a vintage clothing store that was down in there called Savoy. Had that for a while and then I sold that to go down to IU. And then why I decided to come back was because, um, why I decided to stay was because my family's here and I could afford to buy something bigger than this table to live in for the money I had. Moth Danner keeps busy around Muncie, organizing events and facilitating community involvement. She is the creator and director of the Muncie Makers Market, which brings fresh produce and handmade arts and crafts to Muncie every weekend and during each first Thursday celebration. The market is held every Saturday from 4 to 7 p.m. from June to October in the Old West End neighborhood, a historical Muncie area. So my grandmother passed, and mother had lived with my grandmother like since I was a little kid, and I had off and on lived with her, my grandfather too. And then when she passed, mom and I still wanted to do things together, and there was no more bookstore at this time. So uh, we decided to bake together, and mom found a market in Hartford City called the Hartford City Growers and Makers Market. And so every Saturday morning, we went and set up, and we sold baked goods. And the man who ran it is a, um, an interesting person who was raised Mennonite, so that's very conservative, not quite Amish, but who became an aerospace engineer, Jim Ferguson, and he's retired now, was the market master there. We just thought, Muncie needs this too. And it is a growing trend, the growers and makers markets throughout the United States. And um, I just copied him completely. And he knows, he's been a vendor at my market too. And he hooked me up with um, Purdue Extension, the people at the uh, county Purdue Extension office, which is agriculture, uh, are extremely helpful. They're the ones who helped me uh, make it so we could accept food stamps at the market. We have produce, uh, you know, fruits and vegetables, plants, both seedlings and ornamental. Uh, then we have the home-based vendors. Susan is the pie lady. In addition to the market, Moth also acts as the director of YART, Muncie's Yard Sale for Art. This event gives artists yet another place to sell their work and engage with the community. 
Each vendor is assigned a table to sell and promote their products. Prices are kept under $40 so that everyone feels invited to participate. I did not originate YART. YART is decades old, uh, started as a Ball State function, and not even a function. Students at the end and professors at the end put stuff in their yard so they could clear the studio out. It was not an official thing. Yard sale for art, yard. Um, several years ago, um, a, uh, the current person asked me if I wanted to take it over, and I said yes, and this is my 17th one I'm doing next Thursday. And um, one of the reasons I did it is there, I do not curate it. If it is art to you, it is art to me. So there's no barriers to yard. It is free, and we don't take a cut of their sales. Uh, it is uncurated, so anybody can do it. This is a zero budget event. I have no sponsors, and I have no budget, and I have no staff. I do yard completely by myself with no money. Moth is involved in a number of smaller groups around Muncie, including Stitch and Bitch and Couplets. These groups help bridge the gap between the university and the locals. I own the Muncie Makers Market. It is a sole proprietor. It's my business. Everything else I'm a volunteer for. Uh, Couplets is on the fourth Sunday of every a month. And the owner of the cup on campus, who is Martin George, said, we're a coffee shop. We need to have a poetry event. We're supposed to. It goes together. He said, would you do it? And I said, no background or real interest in poetry, okay. Uh, it's not a slam, it's not a competition, so it's just open. And we've got a Facebook and a YouTube channel now. And then Stitch and Bitch, I did not start. Um, Erica Fox started, she's a, a local artist, she's in the band Apathy Wizards. And Stitch and Bitch, she didn't really start either. It's a World War I thing that women did knitting socks for soldiers overseas. I think that for me, I just moved to Muncie Makers Market last year to our location in front of Books and Brews. Now that we're established, growing it. The reason why Yart works is because I do it the same date, the same time, every year, over and over and over again, and I change pretty much nothing. So my goal is to just keep, Yart is pretty, I could hand off Yart now and it would keep going. The market is not. So my job is to keep growing the market, my focus personally in my life has shifted much more towards that and away from taking patients. It would be my goal that the market can grow big enough that that is my main focus. So I don't know that I have a whole lot of newness in me right now personally, but I think the city does. Um, one of those uh, non-profit organizations 
and just need somebody to file that piece of paper to become a non-profit owner. <laughs> and just somehow get her paid for all the running around that she does. Absolutely. She does a lot. Yeah. So, yeah, get not paid. <laughs>